Do you wanna learn how to make images just like these? Absolutely free, 100% uncensored, your privacy guaranteed, because you do it all locally. You don't even need internet connection. Oh yeah, by the way, you don't even need a GPU. If so, follow along, because today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step -step how to get stable diffusion and automatic 1111 running on your PC no GPU needed. Welcome to video number four in our series of the ultimate AI operating system. Today, we are taking a look at Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111. These are the most powerful image generation tools out there today. They're open source, and I'm gonna show you how to install it and run it on CPU only. That's right, no GPU needed. Buckle up, guys, follow along. I'm gonna give you command by command to do this like a pro. If you haven't followed along with the series so far, I highly encourage you checking it out from the beginning where we build the ultimate AI operating system. We have everything from multiple large language models, image generation, deep fakes and face swaps, text to speech, and there's even more. So again, start from the beginning if you haven't been following along. Now let's dive right in to Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111. All right, crack open a terminal. First thing we need to do here, guys, is add a repository. So we're gonna do sudo space add-apt-repository space ppa colon dead snakes forward slash ppa. Hit enter. That'll take a second, and now you'll have that added to your repositories to where you can download new packages. All right, clear the screen with a clear command and do a sudo apt update. That's going to pull in all that stuff from the new repository along with any other new packages. Go ahead and clear again and do a sudo apt install python 3.10. Hit yes there. By default, we had 3.12 for this. We're going to use 3.10. Note that this will not by default change the default. That was a lot of defaults. <laughs> it won't change the default version of Python, but we do need that to run this stable diffusion. Do a sudo apt install python 310-venv. We're going to need a virtual environment, obviously. We're going to build a hell of a package here with stable diffusion. Give that a second to install. All right, now cd into our AI directory that we created. Do a quick Google search for automatic 1111 GitHub. It'll be that first link there, shows Automatic 1111. Now I'm gonna download the Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 web UI. So go to code there and copy that URL. Next thing we're gonna do is a git clone and then paste in that URL from GitHub. This will clone it into a new directory, Stable Diffusion web UI. So you don't have to prep a new directory. This will automatically create that within our AI folder that we CD'd into. All right, now we'll CD into the Stable Diffusion web UI. Next thing we're gonna do here is create our virtual environment because we wanna containerize this whole thing so we're not messing anything up on the OS. So Python 3.10 space dash M V E M V A 1111 EMV. So that's the name of our virtual environment that we created. So now we're gonna do a source A 1111 EMV forward slash bin forward slash activate. All right, now we're in that virtual environment. Let's just validate the version of Python. Do a Python 3 space dash dash version. Yes, we are running 3.10 now, even though the default is 3.12 on the OS. All right, next up, pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. This is going to run through and install all the requirements for automatic 11.11. All right, now let's launch it with CPU only. So do Python 3, launch.py, dash dash, use hyphen CPU space all, dash dash, no half, space dash dash, skip, dash torch, dash CUDA, dash test, space dash dash, enable dash, insecure dash, extension, dash access hit enter and the first time this runs if you don't have the model already it's going to download that default stable diffusion version 1.5 pruned ema only dot safe tensors model this will take some time but i have fast forwarded this up so just a second here and we should see stable diffusion launch in a web ui and there it is, folks. Stable Diffusion is open. Now, you can try to prompt this by yourself, but I highly recommend, if you're new to this, checking out something like Prompt Hero or any other sites that guide you through example prompts. It's a good way to start. So you want to find the model that you're working with. In this, in this case, we're using 
uh, version 1.5, the EMA only pruned. Like I said, you could Google this, you could go to Prompt Hero, just look around, but these are some of the amazing pictures that have been created. So you can just come in here, um, look at the example prompts, but again, pay attention to the models used. This is actually using Stable Diffusion, looks like XL there. Um, for this example, this is one of the smaller models. This particular prompt and image you see here was created using the same exact model we're on. So we'll go ahead and copy in this prompt and also pay attention to the negative prompt that has a, a big impact when you're using stable diffusion. So I'll just paste that in and then I'll also paste in that negative prompt and we'll see what kind of image that we get generated here. There are a lot of settings to tweak though, guys. Pay attention to things like the sampling method. I didn't change that in this first example. They actually had it set to something different. Um, they have a custom seed, sampling steps, there's all kinds of stuff. I am not a prompt engineer yet. <laughs> Hopefully one day I can get there, but prompt engineering is a real thing now, right? It used to be, you know, computer engineering, you had to learn all this stuff. Now the focus is on who can prompt the best uh, for some people anyway. So I'm going to modify these settings to get as close to the example from Prompt Hero as possible. And then we will generate this image, wait for it to uh, populate, and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Honestly, not terrible for the first try. This is rather creepy looking though. So I wanna show you what a simple tweak, cause I did miss the sampling method. I didn't change that. I have it set to the default. Um, it's actually Elora, what they used in the sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that and we'll generate this again. And I think you'll be a little bit surprised on the drastic difference between images. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll come right back and see what the new one looks like. So as you see there guys, quite a bit of difference. I would say this one's a whole lot better, a little bit something funky going on with the hand there, but uh, overall not too bad. And remember this is no GPU, so it took a little longer, but you get some great results either way. And this is using one of the older, smaller models. I think I'm gonna do another video in this series where I show you how to add new models because there's new stuff coming out all the time. As you see here, this is a different model, but a awesome picture in my opinion it's just amazing what you can do with ai now there's also video guys i've seen new uh stable diffusion models even using automatic 1111 where people are able to create short videos so i may touch on that as well just factor in cpu only it's probably going to take some time to generate a, a quick video but either way i think i'll demo that in a whole separate video but that's it guys, you now have the power of Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 at your fingertips, CPU only, you can generate any type of art. And with all these different models, your imagination is really your limitation. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I don't wanna have to go and run through all those steps every time I wanna run Stable Diffusion. So let's create a little bit of automation here. We're gonna create a shell script and then we'll create a desktop uh, icon or desktop file that'll launch that. So go ahead and nano space and then go to your directory of Stable Diffusion web UI and then create a shell script. We'll call this launch, launch underscore SD dot SH. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just saying launch Stable Diffusion dot SH. That's a bash file. All right, we all know that first line in a bash script has to be hashtag exclamation forward slash bin forward slash bash. Next thing we're gonna do is a new line and we're gonna say CD and then we're gonna point it to that directory where Stable Diffusion is. So in my case, CD home, IT Unicorn, AI, Stable Diffusion dash web. And then a new line, we're gonna activate that uh, virtual environment for Python. So source space A1111EMV, forward slash bin, forward slash activate. Next line, we're gonna do a Python 3 space launch.py. And then we're gonna add all those parameters. And you may wanna pause the video when it gets to the end of this uh, command, because these are important if you guys are trying to run this on a CPU especially. All right, control O to write that out, hit enter, control X to exit nano. Next thing we need to do is give it the access to execute as a file. So we'll do a chmod space plus X and then name that file. So home IT unicorn AI stable diffusion web launch underscore SD dot SH. Similar to what we've done in the previous videos if you guys have been following along. Next, we need to create a desktop icon. 
So we'll do nano again, and then we'll do tilde forward slash desktop forward slash stable diffusion dot desktop. Again, call it what you want, but what's gonna show up on the icon will be defined in this file actually. So another must do with a desktop file here is square brackets, desktop entry, do version equals 1.0, type equals application, name equals stable diffusion, exec equals forward slash home, forward slash IT unicorn. It's basically gonna point all the way to that bash script that we just created. Icon equals, we'll use a baked in one for now. In a video later in the series, we're gonna go ahead and customize all the icons so it looks a lot cooler. Terminal equals false. We don't need it to launch a separate terminal every time we run this. And then you could put a comment in here, launch stable diffusion, web UI. Control O, enter, control X to exit. Now we need to give it the executable permission. So again, chmod plus X, but this time the desktop file that we created. All right, now we have that new desktop icon. Looks like a terminal there called Stable Diffusion. If we double click that baby, it should take a few seconds here. It'll activate that Python virtual environment in the background. It'll fire up Stable Diffusion to automatic 11.11, and then it should bring a browser straight to the foreground here and have Stable Diffusion running. And there it is. So a lot better than having to go in there and type a bunch of stuff on the terminal to get that all running. Now you just double click an icon. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Have you used Stable Diffusion? Have you ever used it with a CPU only? Let me know what models you're using. If so, I'm going to do another video where I test out some, some other models, probably some bigger ones, hopefully get some better prompts going, show you guys some really amazing AI artwork. But let me know your thoughts on this. Are you adopting AI art? Are you one that thinks this is controversial or you totally hate it? Either way, I'd be glad to hear you guys' thoughts down in the comments. I hope you're following along with the series, guys, because there's more to come, and you guys are going to have an amazing open source AI operating system if you follow all these videos. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me out a lot, and I appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day. Until that next video, take care.